my name's John Mendez and this is the next in the motorboat and yachting series of maintaining your boat. This time we're looking at how to change your fuel filters. So we're going to look at the primary main filter and the secondary fine filter on the engine. Some little tips to make it relatively easy just in case you need to. So the absolute first thing we've got to do is make sure the fuel's off. This has got really nice positive pulls and you can see it's nicely out both off. On the top here of our main fuel filter We've got four little screws, they actually hold the paper element inside. Additionally, we've got a bleed screw that allows us to drain any fuel or air out of the fuel until we get the first part sorted. On the bottom, we've got a drain tap that allows us to sample the fuel, gives an early indication of any issues. And quite often on boats, this part is clear, which allows us to see much earlier exactly what is going on so we don't have any issues. So, we're just going to loosen these four bolts which will allow access to the filter. Now after I've got that initial tension off I'm just going to use a speed attachment. Now with the cover undone I'm ready to lift that off you will now see into the filter itself and you'll see firstly we've got a spring loading mechanism that pushes down on the filter to create even pressure and then there's a little handle on the filter here and they get a bit stuck so I just use a skinny little screwdriver just to give it a, a little ease and here's what the filter looks like so this is what gets bunged up this one's nice and clean so we can actually reuse it and this one is what they come out like and if this was poor this would all be black in here and there'd be uh, quite a bit of contamination. A brand new one looks like that. You can see it has the little handle on the top allowing you to pull it out, which makes life easy. Now that we're ready to put it all back together, this rubber seal here, need to inspect that carefully, give it a wipe, make sure there's no foreign bodies or detritus in there, because otherwise it, uh, it won't seal properly. And some people like to put just a weeny smear of grease just around there just to make sure it's all nicely sealed. When it goes back on we loosely position it and just start the screws by hand and then again just use the speed driver initially you have to remember because of the sprung plate you need to tighten them all a little bit and just work your way around. So here on our engine is our fine filter. Be quite careful some of them have a water in fuel alarm so there's an electrical connection you can just see there the style of connection so you need to unclip that and pull it off the bottom otherwise as you unspin this you'll ruin all the electric. So undo your connection and then get your spanners on that's a little tight. Wiggle it round one. Better get a grip on it. In like that. And then remember, you've got to do lefty loosey. So that would be righty tighty. Just be lefty loosey. So I'm going to grip and pull. Here's our new filter to go on. Again, we're just going to lubricate the, the top edge. This time I'm actually using a little bit of diesel simply because. We don't want this one to lock, same as the previous one, but because diesel is easily handy, you can always find a bit of diesel to do that. So a bit of diesel on the edge, then it's going to go back in its location, and then the electrical connection will go back on the bottom. So we'll just get that all ready. Okay. There we go. Primary and fine filters are now changed. Before we can bleed, we need to put the fuel back on, and then we'll start with the fine filter first and see how we get on. Now having tightened all these bolts down I'm hoping that the level of fuel in the tank is higher than this and when I open this little bleed screw here if I get fuel then I know it's the case but I'm not getting anything so that tells me the level in the tank is lower than here otherwise gravity would force it through to me at this position. So I'm going to have to tighten that back up and suck the fuel through on the lift pump on the engine. So the next step is we need to suck 
any air out of the system. So our engine here has got a bleed nipple on the side and a priming pump on the top here. Now I've spun it over on the starter a couple of times just to bring fuel into here because that's much quicker than me pumping like mad by hand. So hopefully any air is just a little bit in the top here. So we're going to open and immediately you can see there's a little bit of fuel, that's good. I'm just going to give a little pump, make sure we've got the air out. Oh, there it goes, see that little spurt? That's fantastic. We're getting a few bubbles. While it's bubbling, just close it all up and pump on this type. And that's going really hard there. Barely move it now. So the pressure in there is really nice and pressurised. So as soon as we turn the starter now, fire up. Okay, let's sneak that bit of rag out of the way. Spanner, not easy on these with it all tucked in really tight. Little wipe, make sure we haven't got any excess. And then, a little trick I found is as soon as you fire it up, just take a mirror on a stick and just work it all round the edge so you can see if you've got any little dribble. So, once it's fired and running, obviously be careful if the belts are near you, just have a little look with the mirror, make sure you've got no nasty leaks, saves a lot of hassle. And that should be job done.